This is how you turn on Rumble for your controllers in RetroArch for iOS. The way you do this is going to be different based on the console. I'll show you how to do it for N64, PS1, and Game Boy. But if you just want to see the method for a specific console, you can use the timestamps to skip to that section. For the N64, I tested the rumble feature in Star Fox 64 and Ocarina of Time. And it works in both games. To turn on rumble for N64, go to Settings. Then Input. Then Haptic Feedback and Vibration. Here, you'd want to make sure to turn on both options. Now, open an N64 game in RetroArch. Go to the quick menu. Then, go to core options. Tap pack or controller options. And choose player one pack. Here, change the type to rumble. And that's all there is to it. Your gamepad should now have rumble turned on. To save these settings so that they're loaded automatically the next time you play this game, go to the quick menu. Then, go to core options. Choose manage core options. And finally, tap save game options. For the PS1 core, I tested the rumble in Gran Turismo, and it also works great. To turn on rumble for PS1 games, go to settings. Then, go to Input, and finally, Haptic Feedback or Vibration. Here, you want to enable both settings. I'd also suggest lowering the vibration level to 30%, as when I tested the rumble in Gran Turismo, I felt it was vibrating way too much. Now, while you have Gran Turismo or another PS1 game running in RetroArch, go to the Quick Menu. Then, go to Controls, and choose Port 1 Controls. Finally, tap Device Type. Here, change the device type to Dual Shock. You might also have to turn on a setting called Rumble Effects, if it is for some reason turned off. To do this, go to the Quick Menu, then Core Options. Go to Input, and make sure that Rumble Effects is switched on. Rumble should now be turned on for PS1 games. To save these settings so that they're loaded automatically the next time you play this game, go to the quick menu. Then, go to core options. Choose manage core options. And finally, tap save game options. For the GBA core, I tested the rumble in Pokemon Pinball and Drill Dozer. To turn on Rumble in Game Boy games, first go to Settings, then go to Input, and then choose Haptic Feedback or Vibration. Here, you'd want to make sure both settings are turned on. I also recommend lowering the vibration level to 30%, as I felt the vibration was too strong at 100. Now, while you have a Game Boy game running, go to the Quick Menu. Then, go to Core Options. Tap Input and Auxiliary Devices. Here, make sure that Game Boy Player Rumble is turned on. For Pokemon Pinball, don't forget to turn the Rumble setting on in the game, as this is off by default. And that's all you have to do. Rumble should now be turned on for your Game Boy games. To save these settings so that they're loaded automatically the next time you play this game, go to the quick menu. Then, go to core options, choose manage core options, and finally, tap save game options. I haven't checked all the cores in RetroArch, but if the original console supported Rumble, then the core in RetroArch should also support it.
Also, remember that for PS1, N64 and Game Boy, only some games support Rumble. For a list of games that support Rumble on the PS1, N64 and Game Boy, check out the links in the description. Thanks for watching and as always, have fun!